I'll be honest, on one hand I am stoked by the Honda CRF 450L, but also a little bit crestfallen. I mean, here it is, the definitive slap in the face to all the tree huggers who want to kill off our beloved four-stroke singles. The one that proves that Japan can bring a modern, street-legal 450 thumper into all 50 states. The bike that will resurrect a dying dual sport market. Yes, this is the savior of dual sport. But then we look at it up close with the $10,000 price tag and the tech and the suggested maintenance and it's basically a red KTM. Now being a KTM isn't a bad thing, not by a long shot, but we already have high performance, high priced dirt bikes with blinkers coming from KTM and Beta and Husqvarna. From Honda, I expected something more Honda. And about saving the dying dual sport thumper from the environmentalists, we know that Euro bike prices are high, not only because of the constant R&D and tech that goes into them, but also the constant battle to keep those pesky environmental restrictions at bay. So yes, Japan is coming out with a dual sport, which means dual sport is not dead. But is this price point the reflection of the R&D going into packing this bike with great new tech? Or is it what we all dread? A manifestation of just how much it costs to get a modern 450 through the environmental loopholes. So first things first, I wanted to let this one go because I have no idea what the 450L is actually like. I don't have any footage of it and every other channel and outlet and Facebook page has covered this bike to death and most have done a fine job of it. So why am I adding to the confusion? Well, pretty much every inbox that I manage from Facebook and Gmail and Instagram and texts and the contact form to set up film tours on my website, they have all been choked with the one question, what do you think of the Honda CRF 450L? So this is what I think and it's overlaid with footage from other excellent dual sports doing very dual sporty things. Well, first we'll cover the facts straight from Honda's official website then we'll get right into why I'm a bit disappointed. First, $10,400 is the target price. It could be higher, it could be lower, but that is the target price. Second, it is a 450 street legal dual sport coming from a major Japanese manufacturer. In part, this murders the theory that I posted about a year ago, that the thumbpocalypse was upon us, that dual sport is dead because of environmentalism. But while dual sport may not be dead, it may be a heck of a lot more expensive from here on out. Third, it has fuel injection. That is a plus to most, but some still prefer carburation, especially after seeing hard to find high pressure fuel lines on FI bikes crack open and spray like a wound in a Tarantino movie. Fourth, it has a six speed close ratio gearbox. Now I'm a wide ratio fan, but I will always get behind a sixth gear on a dual sport. But here's the deal, even the expensive Euro dual sports are notoriously buzzy and uncomfortable on the highway. So I hope that Honda pulls a rabbit out of its hat and makes the 450L much better at and above 60 miles an hour. Otherwise, adding a sixth gear is like downplaying the beard on the bearded lady by saying she has great cheekbones. Yeah, her cheekbones may be nice, but not if there's a freaking beard in the way. Fifth, it's got a two gallon tank and gas mileage is TBD. So if it can get 50 miles per gallon, it has a built-in range of about 100 miles, which is pretty standard for a stock dual sport tank, but for an adventure machine, that's really not huzzah worthy. And since it has a titanium tank, well, I have a feeling there's going to be a glut of expensive titanium tanks out there once it is released because people are gonna ditch it in favor of a bigger tank. The claimed curb weight of the 450L is pretty excellent. Honda says it's 289 pounds ready to ride. That is outstanding for a Japanese dual sport, a full 30 pounds lighter than the claimed wet weight of a stock DRZ400, six pounds less than the WR250R's claimed wet weight, Weirdly enough, the 450L's little brother, the 250L, is a whopping 317 pounds wet. The aging XR650L is 349 pounds wet, but the discontinued XR650R is just 305 pounds, and the even older XR400 is even lighter at just 276 pounds. So the Honda is light, but keep in mind, the Beta 480RR is 235 pounds dry without fluid. It's already on the market, it's tested, it's pretty good on the road, it's amazing in the dirt, and it actually costs less 
than the 450L's target price. But now for the title bout, what the title is about. Is the Honda CRF 450L going to kill off the dual sport market as we know it? Will it cause a massive reboot for Japanese manufacturers? I know there are a lot of people hoping that this bike is the shot in the arm that the dual sport market needs. And while I personally wrote Lee Edmonds and thanked him and Honda for spurring on the Japanese dual sport market, this may not be the bike that dual sport enthusiasts really want. Then again, the marketing executives at Honda make a lot more money than I do, and they have a lot more data in front of them, so maybe it is what we want. Because it's not really your standard Japanese dual sport. It's expensive, it's modern, it's high tech. Frankly, it sounds very similar to its European competition. Now there's no question that higher performance and higher horsepower and higher compression all boils down to more maintenance and more rebuilds and more oil and more potential for failures on those long, glorious adventure rides that dual sports are loved for. Performance is awesome and there's a market for performance. But that market is already served by high-end Euro builds. Frankly, I don't want a high-performance machine. I want an actual dual sport, capable in the dirt, but also good on the road. A functional, lightweight adventure bike, low maintenance, bulletproof, built for the ages. When it comes to camping off the bike and taking trails far away from home, and even light daily commuting with maybe a bit of dirt thrown in, I don't think most people want a Lamborghini on two wheels. I personally want a Honda. So the big question for me, is this Honda a Honda, or is it a red KTM? Because here's the thing, in Utah, I can plate any bike I want, as powerful as I want, so I don't need another high-performance dirt bike with blinkers strapped on. I've tried to make dirt bikes into light adventure tourers, including the CRF 450X and the WR250F. And while great mechanics and sponsored riders out there can do just that, for me, the regular guy, it didn't work out so good. So when a giant, awesome company like Honda announces that they're making a dual sport straight from the factory, I want a real road-capable, low-maintenance, mid-performance, daily rider dual sport. A bona fide Japanese dual sport. And while I hope I'm wrong, that's not what the 450L sounds like. It seems like today's manufacturers are only giving us three choices for dual sports. It's either an enormous behemoth adventure tourer, like the Africa Twin or the 1190, or a powerful but twitchy and maintenance intensive environmentally restricted dirt bike with blinkers like the 450L or 500EXCF, or a putt around like the 250L or the XT or even the Van Van. Now hold up, these bikes all serve their purpose and they're good in their own element, but can't we have something that weighs less than a fridge, but also isn't a fire-breathing short-range maintenance queen, but also isn't an underpowered, under-suspended heavy dirt scooter? Well, we already have it. It's the one we truly wanted updated, but it's the one that has stayed pretty much the same, neglected, for decades. the old dual sports, DRZs, DRs, KLRs, WR250Rs, XRs. The copy written for these bikes is basically like, it's the same tough old sow as before, but now with the bold new graphics we used six years ago. MSRP is cheaper than the dirt you'll ride on because we paid off the R&D on this model last decade. Let's be honest, Japanese companies have become lazy with their dual sport lineups. But while we can all agree that we'd love to see our favorite old dual sports get an update, that old adage applies. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The fact is that while we hope the 450L is an amazing dirt bike, just like KTMs and Betas and Husqvarnas before them, if the common rider wanted a $10,000 KTM, he would buy a $10,000 KTM. The performance dirt bike with blinker niche has been filled, and filled very nicely for that matter, 
but for guys like me whose top priorities are value for money and ease of maintenance because we're idiots with a wrench and reliability for those long technical adventure rides that need the ultimate balance of performance and weight and comfort and for guys who want an excellent mix of predictable on and off-road performance without having to keep an eye on the hour counter the kings of that light adventure touring hill are still the old, outdated, unassuming, battle-hardened dual sports from decades past. The KLR and the DR and the DRZ and the XR and the WR250R. Especially when they can be had used in many places for just a few thousand bucks. So high-end dual sports may be getting faster and more modern, more expensive with fancy tech. But in this case, they're not really getting better when it comes to serving the market they were built to satisfy. The 250L, for example, is a mechanical dream, but it's just too heavy, too under-suspended, and way too underpowered. It was a step forward in the ease of ownership, but a big step backward in performance. But it's cheap, and it's functional, and it gets the job done. With the 450L, Honda is going the complete other direction, and it's almost like they're getting revenge for our response to the 250L. It's like that part on Matilda where the kid eats a piece of cake, so Miss Trunchable makes him eat the whole freaking thing. You wanted cake, you got cake. Now, eat it! And with that, they climbed in the wagon with KTM and Beta and Husqvarna, who all feel the need to emphasize speed and performance over longevity and ease of ownership. I get wanting a fast dirt bike, but nobody races dual sports. That's like being competitive on the Nürburgring with a minivan. I like power, and dual sports should be powerful, but they don't need to be race-ready powerful, especially at the expense of the three elements necessary for a great dual sport. Value for money, reliability, and ease of ownership. I don't want the Honda to be a KTM. I want the Honda to be a Honda. But if Honda wants to go after the high-performance Euro market, then more power to them. But I just have to say, to go head-to-head -head against the proven 500 EXCF, the outstanding Husqvarna FE501, and the magnificence that is the Beta 480RR, which actually costs less, well, 450L better be an absolute stunner. So let's hope that what we're hearing at the moment isn't quite written in stone. Let's hope the 450L gives us the reliability and longevity and ease of ownership of its 250 and 650 brothers, but leaves behind the dismal power to weight ratio. Let's hope that in years to come, the L stands for legendary and not for lame. Thank you so much for watching, and if you love adventure motorcycling and dual sports as much as I do, then hit that subscribe button and check out these videos for more, including the video where I was completely wrong about the death of dual sports. I really, really want to thank my awesome supporters, patrons, and producers. I've been ultra busy with tours lately, and for some reason, you guys have stuck by me, and I am truly, truly grateful for that. So, you guys really are the best, and none of this would be possible without you. Thank you so much, and much love as always. Ever ride out.